Hey everyone, I'm Lauren. Welcome to Furniture Flipping Teacher, where every Thursday I teach how I take old and outdated furniture, freshen it up a bit, and sell it for a profit. By doing this, I have been able to pay off my $25,000 student loan debt, as well as resign from my full-time position as a kindergarten teacher. In this video, I am going to take you along as I make over this beautiful, well, once beautiful and soon to be beautiful mid-century modern dresser. Be sure to stick around to the end for the final result. Let's get started. of furniture comes with its own story and this one is no different. I found this piece on Facebook Marketplace for just $20 so I immediately left the house and went to go check it out. When I got there the place was a, basically a disaster and this was shoved back into the back bedroom with a whole bunch of clutter around it and when I saw it I saw how much damage it truly had and I was like because I knew that not only did it have so much damage, but I also knew that it had a whole bunch of things on it and around it and we were gonna have to take it out. And by the way, this was just me, Neiman wasn't there. Hold on, this is the best part. I was like, eh, I think I'm gonna pass this time. And he's like, no, just take it, I'll, I'll give it to you for 10. And I was like, uh, $10 for a mid-century modern dresser. I can't pass it up no matter how long or how hard it's going to be to get out of the house but we ended up doing it so this baby is ready for a makeover but ten dollars you guys amazing so the first step that i always take is to remove the hardware so that once it's removed we're able to clean right underneath there since this is an older piece it does have these screws that are phillips head but are also able to be removed with a flat head. You can tell that this is an older dresser simply because of these screws. I figured we would pass on this lovely, lovely contact paper that was lining this top drawer. So just three pieces of hardware on this dresser. These side drawers just come out as they, they don't need hardware. They've got these little handles on the sides and then also on the top. And this dresser has a whole bunch of weird stuff inside of it. There's toilet paper, I think, and a Q-tip. Sometimes you never know what you're gonna find in pieces of furniture. I'm going to go ahead and take all of the drawers out and we're gonna give everything the cleaning that it truly needs. Now that all of the cleaning's done, we are going to assess the damage on this dresser because like I told you, it's got some pretty major flaws. So the first one, the most obvious one, is right here on this side where we've got some missing veneer and also some more peeling veneer. And I decided that instead of taking this whole side of veneer off, I'm just going to lift off the remaining veneer here. Um, whatever will peel off, I'm just gonna go ahead and peel off. 
Yes, it kind of makes more work, but honestly, removing the entire side would be a ton more work. You'd have to get your heat gun out and all that jazz. And this really isn't too big of an area. As I make it a little bit bigger each time I take it off, but it's gonna be able to be filled in with Bondo, which is a wood filler. And this is actually the first time I'm gonna be using this type, where it's actually wood filler. Before, I've just used the actual car Bondo. Um, but this one should be, I guess, a little bit better since I'm actually using it for the intended purpose. All right, and then real quick, I just wanted to reiterate the reason why I decided to take this off instead of leave it on. When it's peeling up like that, you'd either have to glue it down or if you attach the bond, if you applied the bondo over it, then it would still peel up. Bondo isn't sticky. Um, this is just gonna fill in this little dent where the veneer is missing. So for Bondo, and the reason I'm using Bondo versus like another wood filler is because it doesn't shrink. Oftentimes when you use wood filler, it shrinks down when it dries. And so then you have to use multiple applications of it and then chances are you won't really ever fill your area. Bondo, sometimes you do have to use multiple applications, but generally one will do. Um, it's a two-part hardener. And so this part is the first part that's in the can, and then it comes with a cream hardener. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of that in there. And then we will take my stick and mix it up. And I just like to do this on a cardboard piece that's I can throw away later. And then after it's basically all one consistent color, I will go ahead and apply it to my area. You kind of want to work with smaller batches at a time because that cream hardener is the activator that's going to harden the actual substance here. So you don't have too long of a time to actually apply before it starts to harden up. You do want to make sure you're working in a well ventilated area. We've got some windows and doors open here just so that um, it will, this is just very, very strong and it has very high VOCs. So that is a side tip that might be a one reason why you might not want to use Bondo. So now I'm just going to take my plastic spatula here and grab some and then we're just going to put it where that missing veneer was. With the bigger spots like this, it's probably more, um, more likely that you're gonna need to do two applications of it just because it's such a large spot. Usually I would sand before um, I put any wood filler or Bondo on, but I knew that this dresser had tons of damage that's going to need to be filled in. So I figured that I would fill it all in and then we'll come back with the sander and use it all over. All right, so that area looks to be pretty well filled in. Also gonna look down here at the corner where there's some missing veneer as well. And then I'm just gonna keep going around the entire dresser and fill in all of the gaps. It. We did three batches of Bondo because it kept drying even though I was not making the biggest batches. Like I told you guys, it dries super fast. We are going to let this Bondo dry and then we'll be back for some sanding. 
While that Bondo is drying, we wanna to talk to you guys about today's sponsor, HelloFresh. Choose from 50 tasty menu and market items to choose from every week, including vegetarian, calorie smart, and gourmet options, which provide plenty of variety. HelloFresh has more five-star recipe reviews than any other meal kit. So of the three meals we got here this week, we are going to go with the Monterey Jack unfried chicken for dinner tonight. HelloFresh cuts out stressful meal planning and extensive prepping so that you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes or sometimes even 20 minutes with their quick and easy options. Neiman and I really enjoy the HelloFresh meals because it really saves time between flips. We don't have to go to the grocery store and all of the meals are pre-portioned and it's really easy to follow the recipe that they provide in every box. This food smells amazing. Let's get it plated. Neiman and I really love getting these meal kits delivered straight to us because it just saves on so much time when we're flipping project after project. And plus, we love that it has that two person option because it's mitigating all of that wasted food that we would have if we had to get multiple things at the grocery store. Bon appetit, baby. Yeah, we are so ready to dig in. But before we do, we wanted to let you guys know that there is a link down below and you can use my code FLIPPINGTEACHER16 for up to 16 free meals, as well as three free gifts when you visit HelloFresh. The link's down below. So hold tight, let me eat this and get back to you. Not if you should even get it. You definitely should. Now I can circle back around and say, you should definitely get yourself a subscription. The convenience, the overall quality, the only harp I would have for a growing young man like myself is I could use probably like two or three more plates of this but that might just be because I'm a pig, one, and two, I really like food, and three, this was really good, so it just makes me want more. Maybe we should just order the four-person one next time. <laughs> so it looks like the Bondo is all hardened up, which means that we're ready to sand it all down. But before we do that, I am gonna put on my RZ mask just for safety. This is really gonna protect my lungs from all of the dust that the sander's gonna kick up. I do have a vacuum dust extractor over there. It's Festool. And I have that connected to my, my sander because we're indoors. And so this is gonna kick up tons of dust, but it's gonna be able to suck up the dust over there so that it's gonna lessen the dust in the room. Alright, 
So that was quite a bit of sanding, but we got all of the Bondo sanded down smooth and I wanna show you guys what it looks like over here now. So right here was the worst part of this dresser for sure, it had the most damage, but if you, if I spread my hand across this area, it is just completely flush and that was completed by Bondo. I just layered it enough over the entire surface so that when I I sanded it down I could sand it down smooth and you won't be able to see that damage once we get the paint on I also did a scuff sand over the entire surface so that now we are ready to wipe all the dust back and prime all right it is time for primer and I'm gonna be using my favorite bin shellac based primer and the reason that I'm using the primer is because when I was sanding, I definitely went through the finish because especially on the top, a lot of the areas had failing finish, which means it was just cracking quite a bit. So I sanded all of that back and the primer is going to block all of that and lock it in so that the color later doesn't bleed through after I'm done painting. Primer is always a great step to take in your prep work. It is an extra step, but it's going to make sure that again you don't get that bleed through and then also that you get the utmost adhesion with your paint so let's go ahead and prime and I'm going to be using my 3 8 inch nap roller a little hack here is to line your paint tray with aluminum foil and then it makes for a lot easier and faster cleanup show you guys what I mean by bleed through because even with just one coat already I've got a little bit of bleed through so I'm gonna need to do a second coat so right here you can see some bleed through and I know it's probably hard to see on camera but the bleed through is basically a yellowing color that is popping through. I know that my primer is white and the yellowing is popping through. So the more layers of the shellac that you do, the less you'll see the bleed through. Again, I know priming multiple coats is extra steps, adds on to the time, but would you rather fix the problem now or have to go back after you already painted, prime again, paint again, blah, blah, blah. That does not sound fun to me, so I'm doing it now. We're ready for my favorite part. It is time to paint, and my client that claimed this dresser wanted a very deep navy, and so we went with Atlantic from the Chippy Barn. So we're gonna open this up. I wanted to try this hack where you can use painter's tape here on the edge of any paint can or jar, and then you can use that to kind of scrape your paint off as opposed to the side of it where, you know, that gets all clogged up when you put the lid back on. So I'm gonna try it out. We are gonna be using the Zebra two inch angled brush here. And then also I've got my Zebra square brush for little tiny edges, something like the top up here is gonna be really easy for me to get into those little crevices with this square brush. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna make sure that I paint at the same angle, meaning up and down 
or side to side. I'm gonna choose to go up and down on this side, and so I'm gonna keep all of my brush strokes consistent. The Chippy Barn paint is an amulet decor furniture paint and it is a ceramic based paint. So that means that it's got qualities to really help it level out as it's drying. So that means that you're not going to be able to see any of those brush stroke marks because it's going to even out and level out really nicely. And the more coats you put on, the better it levels out. As you can see, this blue paint really does show through to the primer, but this is just coat one. Sometimes it looks worse before it looks better, so stick with me. All right, we are finished up with coat number one, and this color is just looking a little bit more teal than a navy, so I'm hoping with one and possibly two more applications, it's going to start turning more dark and more navy. Because, I mean, on my brush, it looks darker, so I'm hoping that, again, those multiple coats will make it darker. So we're gonna cross our fingers, we're gonna let this dry, and we'll come back for coat number two. Always sand between coats of primer and paint because it's just gonna give you even a smoother finish. And I just use a very fine rad pad, which is just a little sanding sponge, squishy, and it just takes that top layer, it's a little bit rough, off of there and smooths everything out. All right, we got coat number two dry, so I am on to coat number three, and you know, sometimes it just takes more coats. The reason this is taking so many coats, or at least more than normal, is because I'm going from a super light white color to a super dark blue color, so automatically we're gonna need more pigment, more layers for more coverage. So I'm really hoping that this coat number three is gonna do it. Then I might need a few touch-ups as a coat number four, but I've got about half my jar left here with two coats on, so this should last me the rest of the project for sure. Okay, I said that the three coats would probably be enough, but I did end up having to do an entire fourth coat, but I'm absolutely glad that I did because we got full coverage. Everything is very, very smooth. So now let's go ahead and put on the top coat, which honestly, you know, guys, to be completely frank, top coats are 
very difficult to put on the way that they should look. It, and what I mean by that is that when you put them on, a lot of the times, especially on the darker colors, it's hard to get them on correctly without being able to see a little bit of cloudiness or even brush stroke marks. Even me, after almost two years of flipping, I have a little bit of trouble with it. You just gotta continue to try and do your best as each project comes along. And one of my major tips is to add a little bit of the paint color that you were using on your dresser and mix it in with the top coat. So when I do that, I need to put it in a different container or else I'm gonna contaminate my entire container of top coat. This is the top coat from the Chippy Barn and it is a flat finish. So this is not gonna have much of a sheen at all. And I've never used this sheen. I have used their, their satin before, but I'm excited to try this out and see what it looks like on this dresser and to see if we can mitigate that cloudiness at all. If you really want a great finish with your top coat is to use a sprayer. It is cold outside right now and I don't have an indoor spot or else I would be spraying, but that's what's gonna help you really mitigate that cloudiness. All right, you guys, the top coat is on, so we're gonna let that dry until we can see the true final result and how the finish looks. And in the meantime, I am going to work on the hardware. Remember, there were three pieces of hardware only for this dresser, and they just need a little bit of love. They are very discolored, and my client wants them to be a more silver slash darker gray color. So we are going to be using a new product today and it's called Rub and Buff. And I am going to be mixing two colors in order to get a little bit of a darker gray. So we've got silver and then we've got ebony, which is a black color. So Rub and Buff is a lot like gilding wax where you just got to rub it onto the surface and then about 30 minutes later you just go back and you buff it out and you don't need any sort of top coat or anything like that because it's a wax so it seals on its own so you can also the on the directions it says just apply it with your finger so that's exactly what I'm doing and I'm applying it all over. And by the way, I did already clean this hardware. That's an important step. Just always making sure your surface is clean so that you have the best adhesion. So with this, you're literally just rubbing it on. And then later, like I said, you'll buff it out. Rub and buff. You guys have probably been wondering the entire video, what is she gonna do with the base? Well, I'm gonna be keeping it wood, but it does need just a little bit of love. So what I'm gonna be using is just a little bit of sandpaper and some restore a finish i've used the restore a finish before but i've only used it in the natural color which is just a clear color and this one actually has just a bit of walnut stain in it so it's gonna help bring this area down here back to life So now I'm gonna be taking my steel wool pad here and put some Restore Finish right on it. Again, it's got just a little bit of color in there. Oh, 
All right, and now that we've got the Restore finish on there, we're gonna let it dry for about 30 minutes and then we'll come back with some feed in wax to seal it on. All right, it is time for the Howard's Feed in Wax. And so this is the same brand of product as the Restore Finish. And the directions on the Restore Finish say to finish it off with the Feed in Wax. This is just going to seal that color in and then it's going to also protect it for any wear and tear. So I've just got a natural bristle brush here. I'm just going to put a bit of the Feed in Wax here onto the brush. And then I'm gonna go around the legs and we're just gonna brush it on. As you can see down here after that Restore Finish dried, everything is basically the same color. It looks 10 times better than it did before and all that took was a little bit of some light sanding and the Restore Finish in the walnut color. So if you're looking to rejuvenate any wood but you don't wanna sand it all the way down and stain it again, then definitely give the Restore Finish a try it would be worth it in the end, even if it didn't work because it's not a lot of effort to get this look. Now it's time to put the drawers back in. And so the Howard's Feed and Wax can also be used to rejuvenate the wood inside of the drawer. So all I'm gonna do is put a bit in there. So I put the Howard Feed and Wax in there and now I'm just going to take my same brush and spread it around on the wood. And you can already see that it rejuvenates the wood, just gives it a little bit of hydration. And I'll flip it over and we'll put it on the drawer slide as well. And then I'll show you how easy it is to then slide the drawers in and out. Perfect. So now we're gonna do that on the rest of the eight drawers to go and we'll put them all in and we'll have a finished piece. Well, as I was putting the drawers in and about ready to put the hardware on, thinking that this project was basically complete, I ran into a little issue here with this drawer closing. And after a little bit of troubleshooting, we figured out that this project is not over and that this piece right here is just leaning in a tad bit and so it's protruding out too much for the drawer to go in flush. So what I'm going to do for my first attempt at fixing this is to just take some glue and some clamps and hopefully that holds this over there. If not, I've got a couple of other ideas up my sleeve, but I think that this should hold after a while. Well, I've got it all clamped up. We used three different clamps and I'm just really hoping that we got enough glue back in there that this will hold. We're gonna let this glue dry for probably like an hour or even more just to make sure that it is dry. And then we'll come back and troubleshoot some more, but hopefully this works. All right, you guys, the moment of truth. It's been a couple hours. Time to take these clamps off and see what happens. Ah! Dang it, not enough. Yeah, it's just, this wood is very, very, I think it's warped to be honest. So my next attempt is going to be to go grab my nail gun 
and we're gonna see if we can nail it in and it'll stay. <gasps> All right, so Neiman says that I need to tell you guys, don't try this at home, but in reality, you can try this at home as long as you are making the correct safety or taking the correct safety precautions. So just like some glasses to protect your eyes. Anytime you're using power tools, safety is the most important thing. So I've got my clamp here and I've got this holding it in place. It's very tight on there. And I'm gonna actually go from the back and we're going to just unlock it and then give it a try. So the reason I wanted to try to go from the back first is in case um, it does go all the way through and it works, then I won't have to be filling in any holes here or the paint. So I'm gonna undo, okay. So it worked to an extent, still coming over just a tad bit. I think I need to get some more up in the top here. So we're gonna put this clamp back on, try some more. All right, I think it is good. We're gonna put the drawer in, cross your fingers with me. Woohoo! Yes, and the best part is, oh no, I didn't see that thing. Okay, I was just about ready to say the best part is I'm not gonna have to do any painting, but it looks like some of the nails split this wood on this side a tad bit, so I am gonna have to do some filling and I'm gonna have to do a little bit of painting, but the good thing is this is back in place and the drawer goes in and out. Ta-da! I worked my magic and you can't even tell that that happened. So now it's finally time to put this top drawer in and head to the staging wall. Wow, what a project. I knew going into this one that it was gonna be a little bit more challenging and have a little bit more fixes than maybe I'm used to, but I was up for the challenge and boy, I am really happy with the results. And I hope that this really just showed you guys that not every piece is a breeze. I thought that this piece was gonna take, you know, maybe six to eight hours, but it did end up taking probably around 10 hours. And so when you're thinking about those commission pieces, make sure to factor that possibility in. So for this piece, I ended up charging my client $500. So that included all of the paint and all of the time and all of the materials. So I got it for $10 and we ended up spending probably around $40 in materials between the primer, the paint, the rub and buff, the Howards, the restore finish and all of that. So we're out with a total profit of $450, which really isn't that bad. If you divide that $450 by the 10 hours I spent working on it, that's around $45 an hour. Personally, for the hardware, I probably would have went with gold because that's just the style, but I have to do what my client wants and I agree with her decision because she's got other hardware in her home that is the silver color. So that's gotta match up in her bedroom. Let me know down below in the comments though, what would you have done differently with the hardware? Would you have replaced it all together? Would you have kept it gold? Would you have put silver, maybe another color? I would love to know your thoughts for next time. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found value in this video and just came away with the fact that some pieces are going to be a bit more challenging than others and for commission work if you're having a hard time pricing your things definitely definitely go check out the video that we just posted where we break down the pricing a little bit more and we hope that that helps you make sure to head over to instagram and follow us at furniture flipping teacher where we take you guys behind the scenes of 
all of our day-to-day -day stuff and even give you a little bit more tips over there on that platform as well. We would love to have you over there. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you on the flip side.